When I chose this case for Denise, I did mention it had no provision for a floppy drive, and that was indeed something that I would solve. And that's really the subject of this video. I had toyed with the idea of putting an original floppy into this case, but that would have required a level of modification that I wasn't really comfortable with. And I wasn't entirely sure that it would necessarily fit or be compatible with some of the other modifications that I wanted to do later on. So I decided to take one of these Gotex and put it inside the case. In itself, that wasn't a huge problem. The issue that I did come across is how do I get a display from the Gotek so I can see what I'm doing? I could go down the route of an external ugly box, very similar to those that you can get for the Amiga 500s that clip on top. But I didn't want something that would take away from this quite contemporary Mac-esque design styling. And that's when something came to me. If you hark back to TVs of the 90s, a lot of them had on-screen display. And that presented itself as a bright green overlay. And that got me thinking, why can't we do that with the Amiga? Surely this is something that somebody's already done. And that feeling was in fact correct. The creator of Flash Floppy, which is the firmware I'm going to be using on this GoTech, also has an on-screen display, which uses the STM32 to generate a video signal that overlays on the Amiga's output. So that's the road I decided to go down. And boy, that turned out to be quite a long road. Well, let's cue the blues and get this GoTech installed. Two connections I need from the STM32 to make this work. Composite sync in and a video signal back out to overlay on the green channel. It's a little bit of preparation that needs to happen to the Gotek before we place it inside the case. It doesn't come with the provision for the rotary encoder. These pins are usually filled with solder, so I just need to braid them off and then install the header. The other thing I've already done is remove the LED and I'm going to replace that location with a two pin header to allow me to attach an external LED. I need to get this USB to the outside of the case while keeping contemporary feel. The solution is to use a panel mount USB. This requires a 21mm hole to be drilled. So using a step drill and some careful marking, I created the hole and fitted the USB to the front of the case, but it has a nice aluminium finish which fits in with the case beautifully. The GoTech mounted using a combination of 3mm and 2mm standoff and screws. The entire bottom of this case is slatted and therefore very easy to mount these standoffs to. Another part of this build that I failed to film and I do apologise was just attaching these two filament LEDs to this project board. The next part is to turn our hand to the STM32. You can follow the instructions for programming the device and it is relatively simple. I'll leave links to the instructions to do that in the description below. While programming the device was simple, I needed to find some way of attaching it to the inside of the machine. I didn't really want it floating around inside. My solution, because all the pins I require are only down one side of this small board, therefore the other side I can use to mechanically connect to another one of the project boards and then use the same standoffs as I've used for everything else to connect it to the bottom of the Amiga. And that's where things took a turn for the worse, testing this and nothing happened. To remove the Denise out of the equation, I decided to use a stock A500 and still I had nothing. So I thought it'd be worth running the blink test and they're fake. I then went online to a different store and bought what is described as a Blue Pill Plus. First thing I did with that board is run the blink test and it passed with flying colours. If you hang on till the end of the video, I'll reveal which online store supplied me fake blue pills and which online store provided me with the real deal. And it's probably not the ones you think. I'll also be covering the cost breakdown of this build. And no, my costs will not include the purchase of the Amiga 500 Plus because that is something I genuinely already owned at the point of going down this Denise journey. Well, in my eagerness to test this device, I got slightly ahead of myself and forgot to install the two 4.7K pull-ups required for the I2C interface. So I'm having to retrospectively install those in quite a janky way. But everything turns out all right in the end.
And if you wanted to mount a GoTech in your system, you can probably find something on our sponsor PCBWay to help you with that. Their shared project section is a great place to go and find projects that you can have made. And they've been in the PCB game for over 10 years. PCBWay can provide prototype PCBs for as little as $5. And they also provide a plethora of other services like 3D printing, injection molding, CNC machining, and sheet metal fabrication. All of this is available at PCBWay.com. So thanks PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Not being one to want to jinx things, but this should be the last time I have to install this in the case. We can now wire everything up and we can give it a proper test with the Denise. the switch we have Amiga test kit in lime green loveliness so this is now working the problem is I've no way of changing the image because we haven't as yet installed the rotary encoder this should be a relatively simple install and everything should go perfectly from here what I'm doing is exactly the same as I did on my other GoTech installs I'm just wiring up a rotary encoder to connect directly to the rotary coder header what I am doing slightly differently is I need a minimum amount of protrusion into the case. Therefore, this is basically all the wires at a right angle, so they don't interfere with the power jack that's on the back of the machine. Using a piece of heat shrink to act as a kind of strain relief to gather the cables together and then using some solder mask tape, punching a hole in the top, pushing it over the top of the rotary encoder and then folding it round and neatly packaging the whole of the base of the rotary encoder in tape and then finally encapsulating the end of that with some more heat shrink. There probably are other ways of doing this, but this is my way, and it works for me. Once we've got the rotary encoder built, it's just a matter of placing it into the case, adding the nuts, and connecting it up to the GoTech. Now a final power on, and we can select disk image. So the rotary encoder is working perfectly. However, I probably need to change the diagram for a kickstart before we do any proper testing. It might surprise you that I bought the fake STM32s from Amazon, the reputable store. And the one that I finally ended up using came from AliExpress and was in fact cheaper. The Denise isn't actually the first Amiga ITX board that's been created by the infamous Mr. A. Prior to the Denise, there was Amy and then Easy Amy. Both of those were Amiga 500 recreations, not the Amiga 500 Plus, so they only had one meg of chip RAM. And Denise is an iteration on that Easy Amy concept with, and Denise is by no means the last in this range. Another board called Alicia, and Alicia is an A1200 in the ITX form factor. 
This board is not ready for release, but an early iteration of that board will be on display with Flame Lady, Derek, the very nice man, at Retrofest 2025, where you'll also be able to see me and this Denise on display. You'll be able to have a look at it yourself, play with it, and see what you think of it in the flesh. And one thing everybody's been asking about is how much did this cost? Well, you asked for it. Here we go. I've already said that I'm not going to include the cost of the original Amiga 500 Plus because genuinely that was something that I already had. Literally this board here. So the first thing this Denise build, the kit itself came in at £120 from Flame Lily. The next biggest expense is basically the bomb. I split that across DigiKey and Mauser. So DigiKey, we'll do by D, cost me £69.91. And Mauser came in at 46 on the nose. What are we going to do in pound size? The SMT32 was a whopping £3. The USB mount came in at £9.44. The LED filaments for the front, £2. Power supply, which is a Pico ATX power supply, and was £9.95. That just requires a 12 volt jack in. The case itself came in at 45.35 and I had some parts already um, we'll call that my stock and I've estimated that uh, around another £50 ish the GoTech you can pick those up on Amazon for literally £11 cheapest I've got one is about a tenner and these are bog standard um, either 82 or 83 Gotex. so that comes to a grand total of 366 pounds 66 but that doesn't include the original Amiga if you've got an Amiga 500 plus you want to save 366 pounds roughly will see you into a Denise in a case in a similar form to what I've built here. Obviously you can go down the road of accelerating it, adding RGB to HDMI mods, anything you want. If you did want to buy a chipset, I think you can probably pick one up for about 175. Obviously all these prices are in the UK. If you're in a different region, these prices will vary. Exchange rates at the moment are all over the place, so don't trust anything in terms of just working this out into your local currency. So if you found any part of this video um, entertaining or informative, then please click like. And if you want to see more videos like this, then please click on subscribe. And in the meantime, why don't you check this out next?